Hey guys, what's going on? And welcome to another Destiny 2 news update. Lots to cover this week. Of course, we got the TWAB as always. There was a new trailer that dropped where we got a look at some of the new exotic armor and weapons that are going to be coming in Beyond Light. Uh, we also made some progress in the missions for Eris in the, in, the, in the game for Season of Arrivals. Festival of the Lost is now live. Again, lots to talk about, so let's just get started right with the TWA. We're going to be talking about those new exotics a little bit later in the video. So as I said before, Festival of the Lost is live. This is a live event that is going to be going on through the rest of October, ending uh, during your first reset of November, which is going to be November 3rd. Get in there, uh, get yourself a new horror story, get yourself a new Braytech werewolf, uh, have some fun in the Haunted Forest, a couple of uh, great, in my opinion, armor sets, all stuff that we talked about in last week's video. Uh, besides that, we got a little bit of uh, information on how new players are going to be joining the Destiny world. So if you're a new player and you're looking to jump in, or even if you're an existing player and you want to experience how the first missions are going to go for brand new players, you can jump in there too. As it stands right now, if you're new late, if you jump in there, you kind of get thrown into the world to do one mission. It's really the first mission from Destiny 1, and then you're just kind of free to roam without too much direction. Well, they're completely revamping that. Uh, and they're making it available for anyone to try this out if you want to go in and take a look. Basically, without going into too much detail, you are dropped into the Cosmodrome, very similarly to how you are first awoken when Destiny 1 started by your ghost. Uh, and then you are going to be met by a fellow guardian, a brand new character actually, by the name of Shaw Han. He's going to take you around, he's going to show you some stuff, get you acquainted with how the game works, the systems in the game, all that good stuff. Sounds like there's going to actually be a few missions, I would imagine they're going to be somewhat short, uh, and then you'll be thrown into the tower and be ready to play the game. Uh, the fun thing about this is you're going to be obviously back in the Cosmodrome, where the whole game did start off. And with Beyond Light, the Cosmodrome is coming out of the Destiny Content Vault, so it will be available to all players to go in there and explore. Uh, I, for one, am going to be very excited to go back to that, uh, that place, spend a lot of time in the Cosmodrome back in the Destiny 1 days. And I'm probably going to check out these first missions just for a little trip down memory, 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 <laughs> memory lane, as uh, Bungie so politely puts it. Um, but I think that's a great idea. There's been a lot of feedback, a lot of a lot of confusion amongst new players on what exactly are you supposed to do in this game? How does it work? Who are all these vendors in the tower? How, what's the currency? Yada yada yada. If you're not familiar with that all and it's brand new to you, it is a lot to handle. So looking forward to seeing how this works. Obviously, I have a leg up. I understand the game because I've been playing it for years now. Uh, but I'm wondering. For new light players, is this going to make a big difference? I would imagine it will, and I mean, out of anything, just very excited to get back into uh, the Cosmodrome. Something else that is going to be changing is mod modifications. There's going to be some changes to our existing mods uh, for Armor 2.0, there's going to be some tweaks, there's going to be some reworks on some things, uh, some rebalancing of some things. Uh, lots of detail in the TWAB this week on all that. I won't go over everything, and that's only a snippet of the whole thing, which we will get in the full patch notes when they do become available. Uh, but something that they are doing is they are changing uh, weapon-oriented mods to an energy-type mod, which is going to make things a little bit broader, which is going to make things work better when you're looking at your charge with light sockets. So if you have an arc charge uh, or arc charged mod, that's all going to work a little bit better for you. Uh, the big thing here that I got out of this is enhanced mods and standard mods are actually getting buffed to a point. Pretty much how it felt right now was you would always run double mods to really feel any kind of difference or at least an enhanced mod to feel any kind of difference. For example, a enhanced, uh, you know, auto rifle loader or something like that. Uh, if you put two auto rifle loader mods on, chances are you might see a little but bit of an increase. Well, what they are saying now is uh, even with just one mod, you will see an increase. And then obviously enhanced mods would be even more. 
They're trying to do this so you have the ability to mix and match mods more and actually get some sort of benefit from it or at least feel like you see a benefit from it. Uh, I like that because I know I basically stack all my mods to get the best uh, <laughs> to get the best bang for my buck because without doing that it really doesn't seem like it makes that much of a difference. One other thing I do want to touch on is going to be raid mods and how raid armor is going to work. Starting in season 12, uh, Last Wish, Garden of Salvation, and the, be uh, the upcoming Beyond Light raid will drop with a fifth uh, armor slot dedicated to raid mods. So that's pretty awesome. That's going to make your raid armor much, much more valuable. If you already have raid armor, they will not have that extra slot. You're going to have to earn them once season 12 comes. Uh, the anti-taken mods, uh, you have anti-taken mods, you have anti-hive mods, and you have anti-fallen uh, raid mods, which are from you know the respective raids. And uh, they're changing that up. They're not gonna work outside of the world anymore, or in the standard world, or whatever. They're not gonna work outside of the raid anymore. Uh, taken mods are only gonna work inside the Last Wish raid, uh, Anti-Hive mods from the Leviathan raid will be deprecated. Same thing with the Anti-Fallen raid mods. And that was really because they were quote, giving too much of an advantage in other areas of the game, specifically Gambit, uh, even in the dungeon. So they are no longer going to work outside of their respected raids. Uh, if you're interested, jump back into Festival of the Lost. If you are an artist and you have anything to share, Go with the hashtag FOTL Art Show. Uh, post that on Twitter. You get a chance to win an emblem. Same thing for uh, dressing up your guardian. F uh, hashtag FOTL Fashion Show. Uh, get your last chance to earn these emblems uh, for season three because when season four, or I'm sorry, year three, for when year four comes out, these uh, emblems will be different. So let's jump in to the new exotics that we saw starting with the trailer that we'll be playing right now in the background. We got to look at a bunch of new exotics, specifically four new weapons. We got the pulse rifle, the sniper. Uh, what were the other ones? Brand new sword. And then I'm going to guess this is kind of like a fusion rifle and or grenade launcher. Uh, that's shooting stasis projectiles. Planning on putting out a video specifically on this exotic gear. Uh, later on, maybe a couple days from now, because too much to cover. I want to do speculations, stuff we know about it, stuff we don't know, assumptions, all that good thing. Uh, because then there's also the armor mods that we got to see. Two per class. You got two for the Titan, two for the Hunter, and two for the Warlock. Uh, looks like they really emphasize or um, strongly urge the use of stasis, which I am not surprised at all since that is the new subclass that is, of course, being introduced now with all this talk about beyond light and what's coming up that means that season of arrivals is going to be coming to an end and things are going to be disappearing from the game we already know about the whole destiny content vault and certain locations and certain areas are going away but certain things that are specific to season of arrivals are also going away some things may not be obvious where some things obviously are so Umbral engrams disappearing. If you have any unopened, they're going to become useless. Uh, the Traveler's Chosen quest, the Ruinous Effigy quest, both disappearing. This I heard about, kind of forgot about, but I want to bring this back up again. The Prophecy Dungeon will no longer be available um, when the season is over. It says it will return in a later season. I don't know why. I feel like they explained it, and I just don't remember. Uh, other than that, obviously, anything related to Season of Arrivals. So the events, uh, the public events that are over on Titan and on Io, they are no longer going to be available. And then also um, your your missions with, with Eris Morn, uh, plus a whole bunch of other stuff. There's a full list of plenty of other things. Most of it, again, is uh, a no-brainer. You can go that, check that out in the TWAB. Uh, last thing is a couple of known issues. They're taking a look at how these ciphers are not dropping if you're trying to earn those for the forest, haunted forest. I know I've barely gotten any. I think I've gotten one. Uh, I haven't played a ton, but I think I've only gotten about one. 
Uh, and then the other big thing is PC migration. If you guys were on Battle.net and you transferred over to Steam, that happened a while ago, that is no longer going to be available um, come December 1st, 2020. So get that done now if, if you are going to be doing that migration. Should have done it by now to begin with, but if you haven't and you're procrastinating, now's the time to do it. You want to get that done just in case there's some hiccups or anything. You don't want to be uh, doing that at the last minute. Guys, that's going to do it for this one. A little bit longer this week. I want to try to touch on all of the topics, all of the good stuff. Uh, wow, totally forgot the Eris Morn mission. Spoiler alert, if you didn't know this, we finally got to the last one, and Nocris returns. We also got a little, not really a cutscene, but some dialogue towards the end of it. Very, very interesting. Uh, very much focused around the pyramid ships. We see all different enemy races, as well as guardians, almost praying to it i would i would almost say or or staring up at it very very interesting cannot wait to uh get some more information on this i would imagine as beyond light comes closer and uh we get into that dlc that's gonna do it for this one guys thank you all for watching if you did enjoy hit that like button if you're new here hit that subscribe button i'd love to see you back on the channel but that's gonna do it thanks for watching and i'll see you next time